How's it going everyone? It's Javi from Weather Spongebob 1000 and in this video we're going to forecast how the Bermuda Azores hide will build this hurricane season to really determine where tropical cyclones will track towards this hurricane season. Will it track more towards the west, towards the southeast, or will it track further northward? I'll try to answer your questions in this video regarding the Bermuda Azores high. But before I begin, make sure to subscribe if you want to see more weather they call it. So typically there's three positions of where exactly a Bermuda high could build within a given hurricane season. We have this first position where typically hurricanes move well for northward before coming anywhere close to the United States. And, but we have that second track as well, which does come uncomfortably close to the United States East Coast. And then we, of course, have that third track where the Bermuda High is very well towards the West and it tracks hurricanes not only towards the Caribbean, but as the Southeast Coast as well as the ridge that's building further westward steers those tropical cyclones further westward as a result. So in this video, we're going to determine which track is the most likely for the rest of the hurricane season for the months of August and September. So to, the, uh, to first determine that, let's take a look at the climatology model or at least uh, um, how the ridge has been building in the past several months. So you see that for the month of June, we do have a little bit more ridging, more located more towards the northern portion of the United States. And But we do see that ridging sag down south to where this Bermuda High is located. Now, there's a pretty big opening right around where the United States is. And since there's a little bit more ridging where right around the middle of the Atlantic, I'd say it's less likely based on at least this position of the uh, where the um, of where the pressure is the highest that we would see tropical cyclones move northward well before the United States as in this scenario the more likely um, the more likely chance is that tropical cyclones will track further westward towards the Caribbean and the United States because we're seeing so much ridging right around the northern portion of the Atlantic that it's going to try to force those tropical cyclones further westward. And if we were to take a look at the month of May, you're going to see that the ridging, we do see a little bit more ridging towards the northeast. Um, in this scenario, that's when tropical cyclones would move a little bit um, further north northward before taking a, a before coming close to the United States or the Caribbean but the fact that we're seeing ridging this strong in the northern Atlantic for the month of June and the, the uh, fact that it could continue into July and August I think really does concern me because we could see more tropical cyclones move further westward if this ridge continues to stay this far east but it's certainly subject to change but based on what the computer models are saying or at least the climatology model is saying the CFS model it isn't really the CFS model is forecasting that we're going to see a strong amount of ridging much stronger than usual um uh, much higher pressure than usual throughout the northern Atlantic and this could prevent a lot of tropical cyclones from moving northward into the open Atlantic not really impacting the United States or the Caribbean this hurricane season so we're more likely to see tropical cyclones head further west especially the ones that develop in the main development region however we do see a little bit of a weakness in bridging right around the united states so i think there's a possibility that we could see storms turn northward into the east coast of the united states and potentially the northeast and it's even more evident by taking a look at the cfs forecast when it comes to the geopotential height anomaly in the month of September where we do see a strong um, area of weakness when it comes to ridging right around the east coast of the United States but we see strong ridging build throughout the eastern Atlantic so I think tracks that I favor a more northward track potentially closer to the east coast and northeast are, is certainly more likely this for the rest of this hurricane season. I and of course there's going to be a lot there's going to be a decent amount of tropical cyclones that will move towards the Gulf of Mexico. It it's pretty much inevitable that it happens during a uh, hurricane season where it's expected to be more active than usual. However, I think we will see a little bit more tropical cyclones move northward than what you're typically used to along the east coast 
and northeast. So along the east coast, you need to pay close attention to this weakness in ridging because I think this ridge that's building towards the eastern half of the United States, um, um, accompanied by this weakness that we're seeing right along the east coast, should allow more tropical cyclones to move uncomfortably close to the east coast. So it's suddenly something to be aware of along the east coast, but pretty much for the entire United States coast in general, because of course, this is going to be more active than usual. It is expected to be a more active than usual hurricane season. So pretty much all throughout the United States, you need to be on high alert for the possibility of a hurricane or tropical storm making landfall all year round. I'm just stating that for the East Coast, I think there could be a little bit more tropical cyclones that do move up the East Coast and into the Northeast thanks to this weakness in ridging. So um, another factor that we need to take into consideration is the sea surf temperature anomaly for the Northern Atlantic. And you see that um, for the mo for a lot of the middle of the Atlantic, we're seeing sea surf temperatures much cooler than average. And you're probably wondering how do sea surf temperatures affect the Bermuda Azores high? Uh, well, it plays a major role because if the sea surf temperature is right around the middle of the Atlantic where the Bermuda Azores high is located, if the sea surf temperatures are below average, and that would promote more of a sinking motion where the sea surf temperatures are cooler than average because of course the air molecules are a lot more dense since they move around a lot less over sea surf temperatures that are cooler than average for that time relative to that time of the year so as a result we're more likely to see a stronger amount of ridging and a stronger bermuda azores high if the sea surf temperatures are cooler extending towards a certain area and we do see that throughout the middle of the atlantic now i think this is certainly bad news because if we do see a sea surf temperatures continue to stay this cool in the middle of the atlantic then that will mean that the bermuda azores high will be very strong right around the middle of the atlantic so we're less likely to see tropical storms move completely out the sea and we're more likely to see a stronger bermuda azores high which would steer it further westward close to the caribbean and closer of course to the united states and what's Another concern is that for pretty much the sea surf temperature anomalies along the United States coast, it's pretty much entirely on um, the United States coast is almost experiencing sea surf temperatures entirely above average with the exception of maybe um, off the coast of North Carolina, Virginia and Delmar Peninsula. But outside of that, you see that the entirety of the United States coast is experiencing sea surf temperatures warmer than average, which is definitely a stark contrast from when taking a look at the middle of the Atlantic. So as a result of this, expect more troughs to develop right along the United States coast where the sea surf temperatures are warmer than average. And of course, there's going to be a lot, a lot more of a weakness in ridging associated with their Bermuda Azores high in the areas where the sea surf temperatures are warmer than average. So I think tracks that favor more that favor uh um, that favor a track further westward and potentially further northward into the northeast are um, is more likely this hurricane season as a result of the warmer than average sea surf temperatures that should create just enough of a weakness in ridging and strong enough ridging along the middle of the Atlantic. So I think it's just a recipe for a lot of tropical cyclones to move westward this hurricane season and more sickly further northward up along the east coast. So I think it is definitely something to keep in mind this hurricane season that um that we're more likely to see tropical cyclones take the full trip through the main devout region towards the united states and the caribbean so make sure to keep that in mind now in terms of my forecast when it comes to where exactly hurricanes will track this hurricane season based on how the bermuda azores high will build this hurricane season so i'm expecting um, tropical cyclones will track a little bit further northward this hurricane season as a result of several different factors. For one thing is that the CFS model 
is forecasting just enough of weakness in ridging and um, for the Bermuda Azores high to be almost non-existent for the East Coast. So I think that we should see tropical cyclones move northward before they reach the southeast, which would put more of the East Coast at risk this hurricane season. And of course, another thing is that we're seeing sea surface temperatures warmer than average pretty much all throughout the United States coast. So I think that if a tropical cyclone were to take that trip northward, it would be closer to the United States because the ridging would be too strong in the middle of the Atlantic for many tropical cyclones to move northward before it comes close to the United States or the Caribbean. So that's at least something to be concerned about. Of course, take this with a grain of salt. It's very difficult to forecast how the Bermuda Azores high will build it, especially when we're talking about something that's months away. But it, I'd say you should expect this sort of track more likely than not based on the factors that we're seeing right now and based on what uh, rely, a, a reliable model like the Kamchaji models are saying. But again, take this with a grain of salt because this could easily change within the next several weeks. But yeah, guys, I guess that's it for this video. I thank you guys for watching. Make sure to subscribe if you want to see more weather causing. And I hope you guys all have a great day.